Hi amazing viewers, welcome to Christianity Over Islam channel with Sam Shimon and on this episode of this amazing debate, Sam had an intense debate with Amina, a Muslim lady on so many juicy topics. Let's watch this amazing video to get more details. Hello. Hello. This year. Who is this? Hello? This year Hello? before the rapture. Hello. Speak. This is not yes, Islam. I, I, I know. Okay, I know in Islam you're an Ora, but it's okay in Christianity not. So I thought it was a guy that wants to challenge me. So you're trying to challenge me, Amina? I'm not trying to challenge you. I just asked for oh. an explanation okay. of numbers. Okay, I didn't know that. Where it I... talked about God is not a man, and it also continues into other more than No, that. I know. I'll give you the verses because I don't know if you're just parroting arguments that you think are going to help your case. Numbers 23, 19, 1 Samuel 15, 29, Isaiah 31, verse 3, Hosea 11, verse 9. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So let me repeat the verses that you think are going to make your case. Numbers 23, 19, 1 Samuel 15, 29, Isaiah 31, verse 3, Hosea 11, verse 9. Been there, done that, done that got the t-shirts. Now, before I answer, are you a Muslima? Yes, I am. So you went to a website that wants to attack Christianity. But now you, you sure you want the answer to these passages? Because when I answer, you're going to have to now come on here and say, Muhammad is a false prophet, a son of Satan, because I'm going to answer you. So are you willing to take well, it that far? I want to take it that far, but to correct you, no, I didn't go to any hate website. That's so what's not that, where did you get these verses from? I actually have family that's Christian, oh, so okay. this is common for me. Okay, good, sister. So you got family members that are Christian. They brought up these passages? Whenever we have our, you know, conversations between each other. Okay. Do you have your Bible ready? Do you have it open or do you want me to read it for you? Read the verses. You can read it for me. Okay. Numbers 23, 19. Did you read it in context? What does it say? It says, God is not a man that he should what? Or do you want me to read it? Because I don't know. I don't know if you have you a Bible can read on that. It. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to have to do it for you. All right. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. So it's saying that God is not like men human beings who are imperfect fallible who lie and change their mind now here's my question when this is written at the time of moses numbers 23 19 <clears throat> god did not enter into creation and take on flesh from the blessed virgin mary so what christian have you talked to that believes that god has always been flesh meaning always been human you know any christian who believes that well, isn't your belief in Christianity that you believe in the Old Testament? Okay. As well Don't as tell Testament? me what my belief is. Answer the question because you didn't hear what I said. Let me try it again. Do you, Which Christian says that God has always been a man? See, you're not listening. You're trying to argue. It's going to backfire against you. It's not going to bode well with you. So listen to my question. Which Christian believes that God has always been a man? I don't, I don't have to answer that in a yes or no because it's not Answer yes any way you no. want. Answer directly because it's directly related to Numbers okay. 23, 19. So my, now you're direct, my direct answer is that in the Christianity belief, God is man. No, as well let me as... correct you again. In Christianity, God became a man at a specific point in time and it wasn't at the time of Moses. So correct yourself. Don't teach me about my faith. John 1, so 1 and 14. Do believe in the Old Testament? Yes, they do. Are you listening? Or I'm going to embarrass you if you're not listening. Listen. I'm listening. In Numbers at the time of Moses, God had not become a man. Do you know when Numbers was written? It wasn't written after Jesus was born of the Virgin. This was yeah. written before Mary was born, even though your Quran thinks that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the sister of Moses. We'll put that aside. Numbers 23, 19 is written about 1,500 years before Mary was created and conceived the human nature of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So at the time of Moses, before Mary was created and then conceived the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit as human nature. Can you quote any Christian that says, before Mary, God existed as a man? No. Okay, see now we're getting now the first step. So it is a true statement that when God speaks through Moses and tells Moses 1,500 years before Mary was created, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. But nothing in that passage says 
God cannot then become a man without ceasing to be God. And if he does become a man, what kind of man would he be? One that changes his mind, one that lies, or he'd be a perfect human being because he's perfectly God. What kind of human being would he be if he did decide to become human? I think that's open for interpretation. No, it isn't. When it says Isaiah God chapter is nine, verses six. Let me correct you again because you think you're educated. Isaiah nine, verses six to seven says, God will be born as a man. See, I know you're trying to argue you're gonna embarrass yourself. Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born, yelet yulet, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, El Givor, a phrase only used of the true God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. See, I already know your arguments. Been there, done that. You're going to get embarrassed if you're here to argue and not listen. So you want to hear the answer, or do I need to keep embarrassing you? Well, I want to hear the answer, but also... So what do you do with Isaiah 9? What do you do with Isaiah 9? Quickly, answer Isaiah 9. says, a child born who's the mighty God. That's Old Testament. Isaiah 9. Child born who's El Gibor, which in Arabic could be Allah El Jabbar. Allah El Jabbar. So what do you do with that now? Well, I don't want to do nothing with that. Okay, I so now you're going to you gonna correct your misinterpretation verse. of Numbers 2319. Are you not going to correct your misinterpretation of Numbers 2319? Because it doesn't say I give, God, God cannot become I a man. I want to give my explanation, and then I want to hear your response. I don't care you for your explanation. I just explain what me. it means. I mean, I'm going to embarrass you. I'm telling you. I don't want to treat you like Muhammad treated women. It's fine. I'm not a Muslim. It's fine. You can Numbers 2319, you can again, stop That's talking, listen. Here. I'm going to hang up. Uh, you don't need to tell me what it means because you have no idea what it means. I just told you what it means. God is not a man that he lies or a son of man that he changes his mind. What in that verse says that God can't become man when I just showed you in the Old Testament a child born who is God? Real quickly before I hang up. Okay, fine. I got that. Okay. So stop misusing Numbers 23:19. It does not say... God cannot become a man. It says God is not a man that he lies or a son of man that he should change his mind. Nothing in the verse suggests that God cannot become a man. But if he does, he won't be a lying man like Muhammad. And he won't be a son of man who changes his mind like Muhammad and his God. He'll be a perfect man. And that's exactly what Jesus was. A perfect man because he's the mighty God who was born as a child. Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7. Now, what's your other objection? Because that was a pathetic argument you brought up. What's your other objection? I have I have a lot of objections, but another that I'll bring up, sure. it, according to your Gospels, Mark... No, Andrew, not according to my Gospels. No, no, let me correct you. So when you talk stupidly okay. and disrespectfully, I'm going to put you in your place. According okay. to the Gospel that your fake prophet confirmed to be from God. Surat al-Maidah, chapter 5, verses 46 to 47. Surat al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. Surat al-Maidah, I'm not Maidah, I'm sorry. Surat al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 157. Speak disrespectfully and I'm going to embarrass you. According to the gospel that your fake antichrist prophet who hoard women confirmed to be from God. So what's your question? So my question is, can you explain the discrepancies in Mark and Luke in regards to Jesus when he was about to die in Mark says God why have you forsaken me yes in Luke it was the opposite now let me ask you a question so how can both okay. of those it's very easy the same time? very easy when did Jesus say my God my God why have you forsaken me and when did Jesus say father into your hands I commit my spirit see I'm gonna embarrass you again because now I'm gonna then punish your prophet and destroy your crown for these arguments when did he say my God my God why have you forsaken me what was the hour in both in both of no it's not in both you're lying not in both you're a liar it doesn't say it mark gives you the time sentence. when jesus said my god my god why have you forsaken me luke says jesus said what he said right when he's about to die which is later from when jesus said my god my god why have you forsaken me don't let me embarrass you by misquoting my gospel so i'm going to ask you again ignoramus when did Jesus say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Give me the time. Right before he was going to die. No, you're a liar. Give me the time. It's there in Mark. Do you even know where in Mark? 
I don't have the Bible with me. Right so why don't you shut up and stop accusing my Bible of being full of contradictions because I'm going to humiliate you. It's Mark 15, 34. It was at the ninth hour, 3 p.m. And then after he said that, then he said, Father, enter hands, I commit my spirit. And that's when the spirit left his body. No contradiction, you ignoramus. Now, are you ready for me to show you a contradiction in your filthy Quran? Are you ready? Are you ready for me to show you an error in your Quran? Wait, no, no, no. Are you ready for me to show you an error in your Quran? You're not going to run. I'm not going to bury your prophet for being that stupid to attack the Gospels. Are you ready? You can try, but be respectful because I haven't disrespected you. No, yes, you have disrespected. When you misquote my scriptures, when you attack my scriptures, you're dishonoring the God of my Bible, and I'm going to dishonor you. And don't play it's victim because your prophet... Hey, listen. Don't play victim because your prophet swore at unbelievers, cursed even believers, and murdered them and raped their women. Don't play a victim like a narcissist. You don't get far with me. Sam, it's just a question. No, it isn't. It's I'm an attack, you lit, wicked liar. You lied because when I told you no contradiction, no, there is, there is a contradiction. Don't play victim. That's what narcissists do. That's what your prophet did. Don't play victim with me. Do not play victim. That's a tendency of narcissists. And I see a narcissist a mile away, and your prophet was the biggest narcissist of them all. Do you want me to show you how filthy mouth your prophet was? As a filthy whore, he used to insult people. Do you want me to show you? Show me something from the Quran and not from the Hadith. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are you sure you want to stick with the Quran? Because I'm going to embarrass you. Go to chapter 33, yes. verse 37 of the Quran. Don't you dare go to the Hadith. Go to chapter okay, 33, verse 37. Pull it up. Pull it up. Watch, I'm going to embarrass you because guys notice the coward. Yes. She's saying, don't go to the Hadith. Okay, don't you dare answer any of my questions from the Hadith. You stick with the Quran. 33, 37. Quran, what? Chapter 33, Three. verse 37 of the Quran. 37. Yep. Read it for me. Okay. Read it for me. me. All right. 337 33 says, verse 37 i said it now three times chapter 33 verse 37 33 37 yes go ahead okay read it for me okay i'm getting it 33 37 yes okay that's 33 37 says She's torturing herself from reading the Arabic, but go ahead, yeah. It's okay. No, I, I give you A for credit. I give you A for credit. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. You want to make it easier for yourself and just read the English because you're doing you're killing the Arabic and Allah's going to kill you for killing the Arabic. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, he will. Uh, you want me to lie to you? Allah will kill you and damn you for killing butchering his book. What are you talking about? I'm not lying. Don't make me quote I to prove it. Okay, it's not true. Can you just read the English and say it? Okay, we I know what you're reading. Okay. okay just read the English. Okay. Oh, oh, read the snack book. Good. Read English, okay. And remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor and you bestowed favor, keep your wife and fear Allah while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose. And you feared the people while Allah has more right that you fear him. So when Zayd had no longer any need for her, we married her to you in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons when they no longer have need of them. And ever is the command of Allah accomplished. Okay, who's Zayd? Don't go to the hadith. You want me to go to hadith? I'm gonna embarrass you again. I don't want to do that. You're you're a lady. Who's Zayd? Who is Zayd? Mm -hmm. Who's Zayd? Don't go to the I hadith. I don't see anything in this verse that ah, is bad. What so you're you saying. don't know who Zayd is. So you have no stinking clue what in the world this verse is about because you need the hadith. But remember, you said don't go to the hadith. Now go to chapter 111 of the Quran. Go to chapter 111 of the Quran. Okay. Surah Al-Lahad. Surah Al-Lahad. Okay. 
See, I've been there, done that. See, I got t-shirts for all of this. I don't know if you know. I got t-shirts for all this, and I'll send you a t-shirt. It's called Been There, Done That, Got the T-shirt. Now go to chapter Quran, 111. What? 111. Chapter 111. Just 111 of the Quran. 111. That's it. It's the whole surah. It's a short surah. Read for me. Surah Al-Masad. Okay. Yeah, Masad, or also it's called Surah Al-Lahab. But go ahead, read it for me. May the hands of Abu Lahab be ruined, and ruined is he. His wealth will not avail him or that which he gained. He will enter to burn in a fire of blazing flame, and his wife as well, the carrier of firewood, around her neck is a rope of twisted fiber. Okay. Who's Abu Lahab? I don't know. Wow. But you just said to me, show me from the Quran, don't show me from Hadith. And yet here you are, you need the Hadith to make sense out of your Quran. See the hypocrisy? Now let me give you a couple more, and don't answer it because you want me to make me uh, stay with the Quran. I'm gonna force you to stay with the Quran, so you don't go to Hadith. I don't go to Hadith. I don't know but go to chapter 17, verse one of the Quran, Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, verse one. Okay. See, I hope you're learning chapter how not to argue, not argue. Chapter 17, verse one. Okay, Surah Al-Isra. Read for me, verse one. Exalted is he who took his servant by night from Al Masjid Al Haram to Al Masjid Al Aqsa, whose surroundings we have blessed to show him of our signs. Indeed, he is the hearing, the seeing. Okay. It says, Exalted is he who took his servant by night. Who's his servant? How would we know who his servant is? Thank servant. you. And it says, Take them from Masjid Al Haram to Masjid Al Aqsa. Where is Masjid Al Haram? Exactly. Where is Masjid, Masjid Al Aqsa? Exactly. Not, what is the point, though? The point is, you need the Hadith, Ukhti, uh, to make sense of the Quran. But you just told me, don't go to the Hadith, Ya Ukhti. The reason why I said don't go to Hadith is because they are strong and weak Hadith. And every Hadith yeah. I'll quote to you will be Sahih, sound. Don't play the game with me with Daif and Hassan. Even within Sahih al Bukhari or Muslim. Oh, so you mean the foundation hadith. of your Quran, you destroyed it because without Bukhari, bear your Quran, you have no idea about the Quran. So you're not listening to yourself, what you're doing to your deen. You are destroying your deen because without Sahih Bukhari, once you question it, you destroy the foundation of the Quran. In fact, here, I'm going to prove to you, you have nothing to stand on now that you've even questioned Sahih Bukhari. The Quran, where does it say? what the Quran is, how many chapters make up the Quran, and how many verses of the Quran there are. Does the Quran say that? No. How do you know what the Quran is, how many chapters of the Quran, the names of the Quran, the chapters, and the verses without the Hadith? But you just buried the Hadith, because when I said Sahih, oh, but even in Bukhari, there are weak Hadith. You destroyed the foundation of your deen, go find you another religion. You have nothing to stand on. In fact, how many times does the name Muhammad appear in your Quran? I've already heard that argument. But how many? You're not answering me. I don't care how many times you heard it. Answer me. How many times does the name of your prophet Muhammad appear in the Quran? Can I address your point that you said before that? Which one? I gave you many. You didn't address any of them. Which one? About the Quran. Okay. You said how many verses, how many, all of that. Yes. Right? We only know that from the Hadith. That's what you're saying? No. Well, how do you know? Forget that hadith. You tell me how do you know what the Quran is? Well, we know because the Quran is the word of God, which was Where does the Quran say it's the word of God? Muhammad. No, no, I'm gonna catch you. Where does the Quran say it's the word of God? Give me the verse where it says this Quran is the word of God. See, I'm gonna catch you. Everything you say, I'm going to destroy your argument. Show me from the Quran where the Quran says the Quran is the word of God. Show it to me. Okay. I will. You won't. It's not there. Believe me. Been there. Remember what I said? I got the shirt. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You're only going to embarrass yourself. There's not a single verse in the Quran that says the Quran is the word of God. And Sheikh Google's not going to help you. Quran was revealed. Where does it say it was revealed to Muhammad? Muhammad's name only appears four times. Where does the Quran say this Quran was sent down to Muhammad? And this Quran in its entirety is 114 surahs with these verses all sent to Muhammad. Where does it say that? It doesn't say it. Say it again? Like, wait, wait, say it again? It, no, no, don't cut me off. No, but say it, it again. I want to emphasize it. that part. It doesn't what? No. 
it says it in different parts of the Quran. It doesn't Give me say one part. part. Give me one part that says the that the Quran was sent to Muhammad. The first, the first revelation. The Give first me revelation where it says it's Quran. given to Muhammad. You're not listening. Listen to me. Give me one part that says, and this was given to Muhammad. Give it to me. It doesn't say this is given to Muhammad. Beautiful. Everyone heard you. It doesn't times. say it. Then how do you oh, know? Muhammad. How do you know that? Many times it, there's many times where it says, oh, Muhammad. No, it doesn't. It only Muhammad. says Muhammad Rasulullah four times. Muhammad. It only Allah. says it four times. So you're not listening and you're embarrassing yourself. I already said it. Muhammad, the name Muhammad only appears four times. Every other place when it says say, who is it saying say to? Or it says, oh, prophet, who's the name of that prophet? Stop begging the question and prove your case. Rasulullah. Who to is Rasulullah? Jesus is Rasulullah. Ruh, where does it say Rasulullah is Muhammad in those verses? In those verses. When you read the context of those verses, give you know me a single verse Muhammad. where it says, Ya Rasulullah, and in the context, you can prove to me it's Muhammad. Give me one. Go ahead. I'm waiting. I don't I don't have the Quran memorized. I'm not claiming to be like a Ustaz. Oh, but you you know enough about the Bible to attack the Bible in your ignorance. And now yet when the Quran, oh, but I'm not a scholar, brother. I'm not a scholar. But you sure sound like you're a scholar and trying to attack the Bible. Why you hypocrite? I'm not trying to do that. Yes, you I'm were. Everyone heard it. You're being recorded. Sister, it's not going to get you far by lying. Because every time I went to answer, you tried to object, meaning you were not looking for an answer. You're looking to attack and you got embarrassed. So stop lying. You're being recorded. I was, I was asking a question. No, you weren't. You were debating. Oh, my goodness. Allahu Akbar. No, you weren't. I know when someone asks a question and when someone asks to challenge to try to refute the Bible. Because when I told you about Mark and Luke, yeah, there's a contradiction because it says that. And even though I try to correct you more than once, no, you're not asking to learn. Don't play games with me, man. I've been there. Like I said, I'm going to repeat this like a mantra. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Do I need to say that five more times? Okay, now let's I've go back. I said that I understood about Mark and Luke. Okay, so you're you're not going to use that silly argument again with any other Christian, right? No, you. According to you, you said that it was Mark and Luke that was at two different times. God, yeah. why have you forsaken me? And and then the later, what happened? God, take that was all in two different times. So I yes. said I understand. Good. That. So now we're going to drop that I'm contradiction, not being right? Defensive, like you think. Okay, so you're going to drop that contradiction. Correct. You're not going to use that anymore, Can right? I ask another question before you do i want to know you're not going to bring that up anymore right correct because i understand okay. it now and then when it says god is not, is not a man now you understand what it means you're not going to use that anymore so if i catch you on another website or in, in some forum or on a youtube channel asking the same questions then what should i say to you i'm not going to do that once i have the answer okay I'm good keep what's the other question thing. go ahead what's the other question okay so my main question about Christianity, although you think I'm like a hater or whatever. Well, I'm hopefully not, you're not. I, really, I don't want you. I want I'm you to be genuinely saved. genuinely asking. Okay. I want you to be when saved. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go where Muhammad is. Muhammad is in hell and I don't well, want you to go there. So of go course. Ahead. Of course. Yes. That's what I want to. So when it comes to the Christianity, the main belief of Christianity is Trinity. Correct or not? Sure. And what's uh, go ahead? Ask me about the Trinity. What makes somebody a Christian <laughs> is the belief in the Trinity. Yes, yes or no? You, of course, you can't reject yes. the Trinity. Be a okay. Christian. Okay. What's the problem? Okay. Okay. Great. Which is fine, but sure. for me, my main the main reason why I can't get on board with Christianity is because I haven't seen anywhere in the Bible where it directly speaks about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or says. I am the son of the father or something direct to make it very clear. Instead, it's all okay, just sister. different verses that you have to take okay. into context or that you have to interpret Hello. in a different way Hello. in order to get the message. Hello. Yeah. See, I'm going to yes. repeat again. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Now I'm going to say you're lying again. I'm going to say you're a liar. So let me repeat it again. Been there, gun, done that. Got, let, me, let, me you let me prove to you you're lying. Let me prove to you you're lying. You haven't read the Bible. You're parroting what you learned from other people, attack the Bible. You just said everyone heard you say 
that you know there you haven't read anywhere where Jesus I'm the son of the father right you said that correct okay John 10 36 John I said can I re answer your question now so I can now put you in your place John 10 36 Jesus says do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world I am blaspheming because I said I am the son of God that's John 10 36 do you accept it now that Jesus said I'm the son of God can you explain about the Trinity before I do that do you accept now in John 10 36 Jesus said do you say I'm blaspheming because I said I am the son of God because you said that's not in the Bible do you now accept other, Jesus? You're not answering my in question. In the other Gospels, there were many times where Jesus didn't claim. Okay, and you're him. and you're now trying to convince me that you're not debating, and you're a wicked liar like your prophet, because there's not a Gospel where Jesus doesn't say I'm he's the Son debating. of God. It's a okay, question. answer my question. Stop talking over me, because you still didn't answer the question. Now this is the third time. Do you accept? that Jesus when he said I'm the son of God you believe he's the son of God because I just gave you the verse John 10 36 do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world I am blasphemy because I said I am the son of God do you accept that if that was the if John is the only thing that I'm reading then yes, that's I not what it. you said earlier you change your argument so you're a liar like your prophet you said the Bible doesn't say that. Now you're changing it. Now I'm going to give you another one from Matthew. Let's see how much of a wicked liar you are. Matthew 11, 27. I'm going to give you another one. All things have been committed to me by my Father. Matthew 11, 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. That's Matthew 11, 27. So do you not accept that Jesus said, God is my Father, I'm the Son that only the Father knows, and I'm the Son who alone reveals the Father. You accept that now? My question was about the Trinity. Okay, I'm getting there. You do back. you accept it? I'm going to hang up on you because now you're exposing yourself to be a liar. Do you accept what Jesus just said in Matthew 11, 27? Um, I don't accept it, but yes, I understand. I don't accept it. So why are you asking me? I understand. No, no, I don't care about understand. You first said it's not in the Bible. I'm going to show you it's in the Bible. And even I show you, you don't accept it. So are you wasting my time? The reason why I'm saying I don't accept it is because there's other verses where Jesus There is no verse where Jesus says, says, I'm not the son of God. You're lying. There's not a single verse where Jesus says, I'm not the son of God. Why are you lying? There's no verse like that. Okay, what about, for example, when the fig, the fig trees, when Jesus... What when does Jesus the, fig the fig tree trees? got to do with Jesus being, calling himself son of God? You see how you change it? I'm going to embarrass you again with the fig tree. Mark 11, because Matthew 21. son of God not know these things? What does that got to do with him claiming to be the son of God? Because now I'm going to humiliate you. See, I told you, been there, how done that, got the t-shirt. Let me repeat it again. What does that got to do with him saying he is the son of God? So you're not listening. Let me try it again for the third time. What does Jesus cursing the fig tree got to do with Jesus saying I'm the son of God? Why can't he be the son of God and curse the fig tree? Because it shows you're stupid. You don't know about Palestinian geography. Do you know about something called Taksh? What is Taksh? See, again, this is why I'm going to embarrass your prophet because in your stupidity, you accuse Jesus of not knowing something when it shows that you're stupider than the Quran because Mark and Matthew know the geography because right before figs form on the tree, something called taksh appears on the fig tree. When you go to the fig tree and there are no taksh, taksh is what you eat and the taksh shows that this tree is about to bear figs. That means when Jesus went to the fig tree, he found no taksh Meaning he knew this tree was barren and he cursed it. You see how stupid you sound? Attacking well, Jesus for your stupidity. But now let me ask you a question. Because I'm not going to let you run. Do you believe the, the Quran when it said Jesus is the Messiah? Do you believe he's the Messiah? Yeah. Are you sure you believe it? Because I'm going to embarrass you now. Think twice before you yes. answer. Do you believe he's yes. also the virgin born son of Mary? Yes. Do you believe when the Quran says that he's the word from Allah, Surah An-Nisa 4171, Kalimatuhu 
Al-Qaha ila Maryam, his word which he cast down to Mary. Do you believe that? 4171 of the Quran? The word of God. Kalimatuhu, I'm giving you the Arabic. God, yes. Since you pretend to read the word Arabic. Kalimatuhu Al-Qaha ila Maryam. That's Surah An nisa 171. His word which he sent down to Mary. And then do you believe yes. his ruh and minhu, spirit from him? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to challenge you in front of everyone. I want you to go to your Quran, your Quran. I want you to quote Jesus. Listen to my challenge before I hang up on you. I want you to go to your Quran. I want you to quote where Jesus in your Quran, because your Quran quotes Jesus, where Jesus says, I am the virgin born son of Mary. That's number one. I want you to then quote Jesus saying, I am the Messiah. That's number two. I want you to then quote Jesus in your Quran saying, I am Allah's word, which he sent down to Mary. That's number three. And the fourth challenge, I want you to show me where Jesus says, I am a spirit from Allah. Show me that in your Quran, where Jesus says it. Okay. You haven't answered my question about the Trinity. Show, answer my question. I answered yours. I'm going to keep answering. Answer my question. Don't tap dance like your prophet used to do and hide under Aisha's dress. Answer my question. That's fine, but I asked. Answer my question. question. I'm going to ask it a third time. Answer my Bible. question. Answer my question. Show me in your Quran where Jesus said that. Where Jesus said what? Oh, you mean you ignored me? Okay. Show me where Jesus says, I am the Messiah in your Quran. I want Jesus to say. I don't say. know. Okay. I don't know. Show me where he says, I am Allah's word sent down to Mary. Anima, am, animal, uh, what, animal life? Get the hell out of here. Get this guy out of here. Block this dog. You chill and get out of here. Okay. Show me where Jesus says, I am the word of Allah sent down to Mary. All right, guys, this is the part where this video gets more interesting. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do so and hit the notification button to be notified each time we post a new video. Let's get back to this video to get more details. I, I told you before, I don't have the Quran okay. memorized. So you stuff. better go back, learn your filthy deen before you come and attack my Bible. Because all you've been doing is attacking, attacking the Bible. Me. Yes, you have been. Stop it. I'm going to hang up on you. Stop it. That's all you've been doing. Because even when I so showed you, you Jesus says he's the son of God. The Trinity is discussed in the Bible. All over the Bible, unlike your Quran that doesn't discuss Tawheed. Because your Quran, you. Allah and the Spirit and Jesus are all God, according to your Quran. So your Quran doesn't teach Tawheed, but the Bible does teach a Trinity. So don't go there. Okay? So don't go there because I'm going to end up embarrassing you. Your Quran doesn't teach Tawheed. It teaches Allah, Jesus, and the Spirit are all God. Doesn't teach Tawheed. And the Bible does teach a Trinity. And I'll show you that very easily. But you're not listening because every time I quote Jesus, you say, well, yeah, I understand, but I don't believe it. So why are you asking me? It's why are you asking me? That I'm saying I understand, but there are other verses that I don't There understand. are no That's verses that say that God is not a Trinity. There are no verses that say Jesus is not the Son of God. Stop it. Please stop the nonsense. Let me ask you a question okay, related to the Trinity. Let me ask you a question related to the Trinity. Can you okay. say in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Gabriel? No. Why? Because we only believe in one God, Allah, so, that's it. Okay, so if I were to say in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Gabriel, that means I'm making Muhammad and Gabriel God? If you're saying it like the Christian way, yeah. Okay, forget it. Islamic way. Can the Muslims say in the name of Allah, Bismil, Bismil, you know, Allah, wa Muhammad, wa Jibreel? Can you say that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. No, I didn't say Bismillah ar-Rahman. Bismillah wa Muhammad, wa Jibreel. In the name of Muhammad and Jibreel. In the name of Allah and Muhammad and Jibreel. In the name of Allah and Muhammad and Jibreel. I don't know how many times I'm going to repeat myself. No, it just Bismillah. Why in can't you say Allah, in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Jibreel? Why can't you say that? Uh, because we don't worship Muhammad or Jibreel. Thank you for proving Jesus confirmed the Trinity. Guys, let me repeat what you just said. Guys, listen. Because now watch how I'm going to hang up on her after I quote this verse. Notice what she said. Listen, 
You can't say in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Jibreel because we don't worship Muhammad and Jibreel. So if I were to say in the name of Allah and Muhammad Jibreel, I'm making Muhammad and Jibreel God. You just buried yourself because in Matthew 28, 19, 28, 19, pay attention because I'm about to hang up on you because I know what you're going to say. Matthew 28, 19, Jesus says, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's your Trinity in your face. Now deny it so I can hang up on you. What is it, Matthew? What? 28, 19, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to deny this is Trinitarian so I can hang up on your face. Say it's not the Trinity. Please say it. Say it. I, I'm looking it up and I'm I'm looking up the Amharic Testament. And you know Matthew's written in, in Greek, right? I could care less. You can even it's there in Amharic. What a desperate fool you are. Do you now yeah. agree that Jesus because said I want the original It's in Greek, in it's not in Amharic. Okay, so do you now so admit English. do you admit Jesus just confirmed the Trinity? Yes or no? Jesus, I didn't get to read it yet. Can I read it? I just quoted it to you. I'm going to record it five more times. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat it again. Making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat it again. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Do I need to repeat it again? Okay, so him saying that means that he's saying that we don't worship the Son and the Holy Spirit. Do okay, you want me to hang up on you right now? Let's try this again. You said you cannot say in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Gabriel because we don't worship Muhammad and Gabriel. That means if you say in the name of Allah and Muhammad and Gabriel, that's making Muhammad and Gabriel God with Allah. Jesus said in the name, singular, of the Father, and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, Father, there you go, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one name. So do you now agree that Jesus just identified Father, Son, Holy Spirit with one name? That's the Trinity. Yes or no? Quickly. Yes. Thank you. Now I know you're honest. Say it again. Yes. Okay. So stop attacking the Trinity. Stop attacking the Trinity. Now I'm going to give you one more from Jesus and I'm going to go back to the other caller. Because you honestly said it, you can now stay in my channel and learn. Stop debating, learn the faith. Now I'm going to show you something. Go to your Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22 of the Quran. Chapter 22. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now that you said that, now I respect. Now I know you're, there's some hope that God is working in your heart. Go to chapter 22 and I want you to get there, Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22. Okay. When you get there, I want you to look verses six and seven. Six and seven. Okay, I got it. Okay, read it for me slowly. That is because Allah is the truth, and because He gives life to the dead, and because He is over all things competent, and that they may know that the hour is coming, no doubt about it, and that Allah will resurrect those in the graves. Okay, pay attention to what your Quran said. Allah is the truth, al haq He gives light to the dead. The hour is coming, have no doubt about it, where He will raise them from the graves, right? Yeah. Okay, so on Yom Al-Qiyamah, I want you to listen carefully. On the Day of Judgment, Allah will raise the dead from the graves. He is the truth who gives life to the dead. Allah raises the dead at the hour from their graves. Not a creature, not Jibreel, not Muhammad. Allah at the hour raises the dead from their graves. He's the truth and he gives life. So remember that because now I'm going to read to you something from the Gospel of John. I'll read it for you. You can write it down. John 5, 21. John 5, 21. Pay attention. This is where we're going to go with this. John 5, 21. Watch what's going to happen here. For as the Father raises the dead, this is Jesus speaking, as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom He will. Quran says Allah gives life to whom He will. Jesus says, I the Son and the Father, we give life to whom we will. That's number one. John 5, 25. John 5, 25. Watch here. John 5, 25. 
John 5, verse 25. This is Jesus again. Pay attention. I'm going to read it slowly for you. John 5, 25. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming. Don't forget what you read in Surah Al-Hajj. In chapter 22, verse 7, it says, the hour is coming. Have no doubt about it. Allah will raise them from their graves. Notice what Jesus said. John 5, 25. More, most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Jesus says, that hour, they're going to hear the voice of the Son of God, my voice, and they'll come to life. Oh, my goodness. John 5, 28 to 29. Write it down. John 5, verses 28 to 29. Because yeah, I'm going to read it for you. I got it. Okay, let me read it for you now. John 5, 28, 29. Pay attention. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, hour is coming, which all who are in their graves will hear his voice. And 25, it says, the voice of the Son of God, and come forth. Now, final one, John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Watch what's okay. going to happen here. John 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, you just read in your Quran. Allah is the truth. He gives life. The hour comes. Allah will raise them from the graves. Jesus here said, I'm the Son of God, who like the Father, gives life to whom I want. I am the truth and the life, and the hour is coming. For those in the grave will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and live. Why is Jesus speaking as if he's your God, Allah? Why is he doing what the Quran says only Allah can do? Oops. Conveniently. Everything that you have just said is from John. And so if I show you from Muhammad that John is the gospel, are you going to say I'm stupid and I'm sorry for arguing with my prophet? Uh... No. Okay, now, the, wait, the Quran says there's a prophecy of Jesus in the gospel. Where is that prophecy? The Quran says there's a prophecy of Jesus in the no, Bible. No, Muhammad, I'm sorry. There's a prophecy of Muhammad in the gospel. Where is that prophecy? Oh, the prophecy of Muhammad in the gospel. Which one? Uh, which one was it? I know Isaiah, yeah. That's not the gospel. Let me try it again. Which gospel prophesied muhammad oh i don't know that i know the old testament one. no no because your quran says chapter 7 verse 157 there's a prophecy in the torah and the gospel do you know what which prophecy your muslims quote your ikhwan quote which one john, john 14 from the New testament. john 14 john 15 john 16 where jesus says i will pray the father will give you another paraclete And if you have the Halali Khan, Halali Khan version of the Quran, guess what they put in parentheses if you go to 7157? Do you have Halali Khan? Quran? No. Okay, can I send you the link? Because now you're going to embarrass Muhammad because your prophets tell me that the prophecy of Muhammad is in the Gospel of John. The very Gospel you keep attacking. Oh, but that's John! Oh, but John is good enough to prove Muhammad was predicted but when John proved Jesus is God, oh, but that's John! John wrote that! You see how stupid you sound when you argue this way? Here, let me show you. That's, are you saying that's what Muslim scholars say? All your scholars say that. Even Ibn Ishaq and Sirat Rasulullah. Do, do I need to quote him? Here you go. Yeah, but, that's, but Muslim scholars can say that. That doesn't mean it's a fact. So then I'm where sure is the prophecy? Scholars. Again, where is the prophecy of Muhammad in the gospel? See, you're embarrassing yourself. Because in chapter 7, verse 157, it says, there's a prophecy of Muhammad in the gospel that's with them. What gospel? What prophecy? Or is the Quran a lie? I just sent it to you. There you go. Al-Adi Khan. What, what did they give as a, a prophecy of Muhammad in the Injil? It's in Al-Adi Khan. It says, let me read it, those who follow the messenger, the prophet, who can neither read nor write, whom they find written with them in the Torah, Deuteronomy 18.15, and the Injil Gospel, John 14.16. Oh, but wait, Halali Khan, didn't you listen to your uh, your sister, your ukhti here? That's John, why are you going to John? You see, when you Muslims talk like this, you, make, you disgust us. And this is why we hate Muhammad with such a passion. Because only a wicked demon could create such people. Only a false prophet like Muhammad could create such people like you, inconsistent, 
dishonest and wicked. So John is good enough okay, to show that Muhammad is prophesied. But when the same John shows that Jesus claimed to be God, oh, but that's John. That's John. Who cares about John? You sure? You want me now go to Matthew, Mark, and Luke and show you that Jesus does what the Quran says Allah does? Yes. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to chapter 89, verses 21 and 22 of the Quran. Chapter 89, verses 21 and 22 of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go. I want you to read for me. Chapter 89, verses 21 and 22. You read it for me. Okay. Okay, read it for me. Okay. 89, 21 says, okay. No, when the earth has been leveled, pounded, and crushed. Yep. And 22 says, And your Lord has come, and the angels rank upon rank. So who's coming when the last day when the earth is crushed? Your Lord. And the angels, right? Yes. And if you read 23, this is the day of judgment. Because what does it say in 23? And brought within view the day is hell. That day man will remember, but what good to him will be the remembrance. Okay, so don't tell me, don't tap dance around this. It says, your Lord is coming with the angels at that day. That's the day of judgment. Okay, now mm -hmm. go to Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 210. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 210. Okay. Read for me who's coming. 2, 2, 10. Yep. Chapter it 2, says, verse 10, read it. Do they, do they await but the Allah should come to them in covers of clouds and the angels as well? And the matter is then decided. And to Allah, all matters are returned. So it's talking about the Jews. So you're waiting for Allah to come on the shadows of the clouds with the angels to decide the matter, meaning the day of judgment. So who comes on the shadows of the clouds with angels? Allah. You sure, right? That's what it says. In okay. Bahara. Matthew 16, 27. Guys, I want you to hear. The Quran says, Allah's coming with the angels and he comes with the shadows of the clouds on the day of judgment. Okay. Matthew 16, 27. Let's see what Jesus says. Matthew 16, 27. Let's read. Pay attention. Watch what's going to happen here. You said you want from, not John, let me give you Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay. For the Son of Man will come and the glory of his father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Jesus says, I, the son of man, coming the glory of my father with the angels to repay people. According to the Quran, is the prophet coming with the angels to judge? And the Quran, Surah Baqarah says Allah. And then chapter 89 says your Lord, right? Yes. But says, Jesus said, Lord. Jesus said, I, the Son of Man, am coming in the glory of my Father with the angels to repay people according to what they've done. Oh, my goodness. Matthew 25. But it's not a contradiction. Where's the contradiction? So you believe Jesus is your God, Allah? No, I said it's not a contradiction because... How can Matthew it not says, be a contradiction if Jesus is just a prophet? Well, How does he come with angels is, to judge the world when your Quran says Allah's coming? Listen, this is one of my questions because in the Bible, Jesus always re refers to himself as son of man. So but you're, you're, you're not man? listening, sister. Let's try it again. Jesus is son of man because he's man. What do you think? We think he's a ghost like Casper. But let me repeat, you're not listening. The son of man is coming in the glory of his father. So the son of man is the son of God, the glory of his father with the angels to judge. Is the Quran in agreement Jesus is going to come with the angels to judge the world. That's what it says in the Quran, yes. So Jesus is coming to judge the world. So you just proved Jesus is Allah, your Lord. Thank you. I didn't say Jesus. I so said the Quran, the who's Lord. coming with the angels to judge the world? The Lord, yes. And he's coming with the angels to do what? To judge the world and he's coming on the clouds right yes but jesus said i am the son of man because he's man nobody thinks he's cast for the friendly ghost who will come in the glory of my father with the angels to judge everyone do you believe that what jesus said agrees with your quran agrees with the Quran. The Quran, oh my goodness, my goodness. You're so demonized, you can't, you see it, but you don't want to say it because now this proves Muhammad is the son of the devil. 
The Quran is clear. Allah, your Lord, comes yeah. to judge with the angels, not a creature, not an Jibreel, not Muhammad, not a prophet. But in yeah. Matthew, Jesus says, I am the Son of Man. I will come in the glory of my Father with my angels, and I will judge the world and repay them. According to the Quran, Jesus is claiming what only Allah does. But let me give you a couple more from Matthew. Are you ready? Okay, sure. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Matthew 24, 39, 29 to 31. Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. Okay, let's read. Okay. Okay. We're gonna when you get there, I'm gonna read it for you. Matthew 24, verses 29 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now watch 30. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. With power and great glory, who? The Son of Man will come on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the earth to the other. So Jesus says, I, the Son of Man, will come on the clouds of heaven. I will send my angels to gather my elect at that day. Yet your Quran says it's your Lord, your Allah, who comes on the shadows of the clouds with the angels on that day. Wow. And in case you didn't get it, you still want to be blind? Matthew 25, verses 31 to 33. Matthew 25, verses 31 to 33. Matthew 25. Verses 31 to 33. Let's see what Jesus again says. Ah, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Audhu billah min Muhammad rajim And he will sit on the throne of his glory. So the Son of Man will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Now notice verse 33. Let me read it for you. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Now, ha, huh, who's the son of man who sends his angels, who sits on a throne of glory, and all the nations will stand before him as he judges them? Read Matthew 25, 34, verse 34. Pay attention. Matthew 25, verse 34. We're going to read it now. Pay attention what Jesus says. Those on the right, then the king will say to those on his right, Come you, blessed of my father. Oh, the Son of Man says, God is my Father, so he's the Son of God. Come you, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So here Jesus says, God is his Father, he's the Son of God. He's the Son of Man, because he's human too, who sits on the throne of glory with his angels attending him. All the nations stand before him, and he judges all the nations, meaning he's going to judge your nation, he's going to judge you, your mother, your father, and he's going to judge Muhammad and condemn Muhammad to hell. So do you believe this, that Jesus is your Lord, your King, Son of God, who will judge you and Muhammad and your mother and your father and all nations? Who comes on the clouds with the angels? This is Matthew. This is not John. So don't play games with me. Do you believe this? Mm -hmm. That's what's in Matthew, yeah. Okay, so Jesus in Matthew says, God is my father. I'm the son of man. I ride the clouds of heaven. The angels, I own them. I send them to gather the nations before me as I sit on a throne, repay them and judge them. And the righteous, I will give them heaven, Jannah, and the wicked like Muhammad, I will send them to hell. And that's Matthew. Do you believe that about Jesus? I don't believe that about Jesus, but I'm oh. understanding what you're saying. So when you come to believe and receive, then God will save you from Muhammad and his filthy deed. Because if you keep going this way, you're going to end up in hell where your prophet is. Because your prophet was not a friend of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all prove Muhammad was a son of Satan and Antichrist. Now, since I answered your questions, I got one question for you. Are you ready? But you didn't answer the question about where does the Bible talk about Trinity? Wait, wait, clearly wait, 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 wait. I'm going to say you're a liar like your, your prophet. You're a filthy liar. Didn't you just say Matthew 28, 19? Let me repeat because this is recorded. Everyone's hearing you. 
Did you remember Matthew 20, 28, 19, or like Muhammad, you forgot and you abrogated yourself? Matthew 28, 19, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, Holy Spirit. And you said, yes, that's the Trinity. Did you get amnesia like your prophet and you abrogated yourself? I don't have amnesia and I'm not abrogating. I'm saying word for word. What does it say about the you Trinity? You just read the that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit have one name and you admit that's the Trinity. You forgot? This is recorded. I'm now it's on my YouTube channel. So embarrass yourself and say, oh, I forgot. Go ahead and embarrass yourself. I'm not saying I forgot. I'm saying I haven't heard where it says directly you, in the Bible. You just said that is the Trinity. Did you remember that 10 minutes ago? Oh, yeah. It came from your own mouth. Yeah, that's the Trinity. I, don't, I never said that. For yes, you no, did. It's recorded. I didn't say verbatim. I didn't say Oh, verbatim. you want the word Trinity? The word exact word? Yes. Or okay. something similar. Since oh, can we, wait, 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 wait. Let's play your word. game. How about just Let me play similar. your game. Let me play your game. Show me How the word. Show me the word Tawheed in the Quran. Give me the word Tawheed. I, I said... I said something similar. And I, I gave you something similar and you admit it. One name, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But now I'm going to bury you. Show me Tawheed in the Quran, the word Tawheed. Show it to me, Tawheed. Nope. No, I want the word Tawheed. Give it to me in the Quran. Uh, did it, there's a lot of verses that. Give me the. the no, Tawheed. Tawheed. Give me that word Tawheed. in the Quran. What does Tawheed mean? Tawheed means I don't care what it means. Give me the word Tawheed. Don't play games. I want the word Tawheed. Tawheed. Okay. Ahad. Ahad is not Tawheed. And grammatically, it's incorrect. But give me the word Tawheed. See? I'm going to play your game. Tawheed. I just said Tawheed. Ahad is not Tawheed. Give me Tawheed. The word Tawheed. One more time. In the Quran. Yeah, no, in my mother's diary, in her will. <laughs> exactly. See? Show okay. me the word Tawheed in the Quran. <laughs> I I just said I said it. I okay. just said Okay. Show me where the Quran says. Okay, now let me add, add to it. Show me where it says Allah is only one shaqs or one person. That he's only one person, one shaqs. Isn't that the same surah that I just read? No, because Allah, I had that's Allah oh my God. Allah, what, no, saying Allah yeah. is one doesn't tell me what it means. Yeah. To say God is one, one what? Show me the Quran says Allah is one shakhs, one person. It doesn't say one shakhs because God doesn't ever identify himself as You want to bet? In the hadith, he's called a shakhs and a shay. I am not... I don't like hadith don't do that again hadith. i'm gonna embarrass you sister hadith. sister if hadith. you reject hadith, hadith, hadith we're gonna have fun manipulated by men i'm not hadith you mean the same hadith that you know you need to know the quran Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. you don't play games sister you don't choose the hadith you like okay now since you want to play that game because you want to prove i'm not going to prove the trinity in your quran go to surat al maryam chapter 19 of the quran Okay, Surah Maryam. Chapter 19 of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to read slowly, 16 to 21, slowly. But read 16 to 19 first. Okay. Okay, so. Go ahead. But slowly. And mention, and mention, O Muhammad, in the book, the story of Mary when she withdrew from her fam family to a place toward the east. And she took in seclusion from them a screen. Then we sent her, then we sent to her our angel. No, it doesn't say angel. That, it doesn't say angel. Correct it. That's the mistranslation. What's the Arabic word? It's ruh, ruhana. Ruhana. Yes, yeah. right. So if we sent her our ruhana. spirit, right? Sahih International said the Archangel. I could care I, if it's Daif International. Hassan, it doesn't matter. The Arabic is Ruh. It doesn't say angel. Yeah, in Arabic it says Ruhana. Yeah. Okay, so we sent her our spirit. That's why other translations like Pithal and Arberi, it says Ruh. 
So we center our ruh, our spirit. Now keep going. And he represented himself to her as a well-proportioned man. Keep going. She said, indeed, I seek refuge in the most merciful, merciful from you. So leave me if you should be fearing of Allah. Don't he stop. said, I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you news of a pure word. Stuck for Allah, who stuck for Allah, this uh, international, how dare it butcher the word of, of your God. It doesn't say, I'm only a messenger of the Lord to give you news. That's not in the Arabic. It's li, ha, li ahabba. I've come to give you a faultless son. Correct the English. It says, "Qala inna ma ana rasulu rabbika li ahabba laki." Aha, li ahabba laki. It means I came to give you a faultless son. It doesn't say news. So correct it. What did the spirit actually say? I'm only a messenger of your Lord, sent to give you a faultless son, right? Sent to give you a faultless son. Yeah, Li Ahabba isn't I give you news. I give you. The word news is not in the Arabic, right? right? It's not, no, the word news is not directly there. But okay, so translate it word for word. That's why other translations say, I am only a messenger of your Lord sent to give you a faultless son. Right. Okay, so who's going to give her a son? Uh, the angel by the will of you God. You said angel again? I'm going to give you $10 million. Show me the word angel. Oh, oh, the Billah, Imam Darajim. Where'd you get angel? It said spirit. So who gave her a who gave her a faultless son? According to the Quran. Right there. What you're reading, that's the Quran, okay. right? Who gave her a faultless According son? To, well, it says angel. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna hit my head against the wall. The word is not angel in the Arabic. You just read it. Ruhana, it's spirit. Who gave her yeah. the faultless son? It just says we blew our spirit. But no, that's somewhere else. Angel. He, he, oh, the Muhammad Rajim. Are you reading in front of your eyes? We yes. sent her our spirit who appeared as a man. The spirit said, I'm only a messenger of your Lord. To give you. So who gave her the faultless son? It's in front of you. The angel. Oh, <laughs> the word angel is not in the Arabic. My goodness. Can you say it? The spirit. No, because I don't. Is there a different English translation? That yes, Pictal and Arbery. There's many translations, man. But you don't need the, the you I'm read the Arabic. You read the Arabic. In 17, it says Ruch. It's spirit. Yeah, yes, we said Ruch, and that means spirit. And we know in Arabic, Malik is angel. Yes. So, so who gave yes. her the faultless son in that chapter? Correct, but you're like we're just taking one verse. No, I'm gonna give you other verses. My goodness, you're impatient. Context. I'm gonna give you context. Before. My goodness, I'm gonna give it to you if you can answer. You haven't even answered this. Who okay. gave her a faultless son? Ruhana. Okay, what translate, please? Ruhana. <laughs> translate. The spirit gave her a faultless son, right? Our angel. See, there you go again. See, you you know you're embarrassing yourself here. You're being recorded. About over 700 people are watching you. This is not going to be on my YouTube channel. Why are you embarrassing yourself? Be honest before God if you fear God. It's rule no, if spirit. We want to talk about Quran, let's do it in Arabic because that's okay. That's you gave me the Arabic ruh. You just said it's not the word angel, so translate ruh in English. Ruhana. What does that mean in English? Spirit. Oh, thank Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, spirit. 
So who gave her a faultless son? Who gave her a faultless son? Oh my goodness, man. Are you, you kidding me? Like, cause you're just trying to trap me in this question. I'm giving you the ayat. Oh my goodness. It's in front of you, 17 to 19. I am only a messenger of your Lord sent to give you a faultless son. Who's speaking? 17 told you. The Ruh, the spirit who appeared as a man. My goodness, you can't get that? The spirit who appeared as a man is an angel. No, there's not a single verse in the Quran that says this spirit is an angel. No, give it to me. Show me where it says the spirit is an angel and show me where it says angels are spirits. I challenge you, it's not in the Quran. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Okay, so let's come back now. This, who gave her a faultless son? The Ruh. Can you speak English for the people who speak English? Okay, for the people that speak English, Ruh means spirit. So who gave her a faultless son? Ruh, spirit. Thank you, finally, thank you God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally she said the spirit. So the spirit gave her a faultless son. Now go to Surat Al-Tahrim. Chapter 66, verse 12. Now we're going to go to, you said context, right? Now I'm going to give you other verses. Go to Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 12. Surah Tahrim. Yeah, that chapter 66. If you don't know the name, it's okay. Just chapter 66. Okay. Read for me, verse 12. Surah Al-Tahrim, verse 12 says... Okay. And the example of Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, so we blew into her garment through our angel, and she. Okay. See it again, this damn her translation, her. butchering of the Arabic Quran. Shame on them! It didn't say we blew, we blew through our angel. It says we blew into her of our ruh. Read the Arabic again. Yeah, fihi min ruhana. Okay, Ruhina. so what did Allah breathe into her? Ruhina. And what is that again for him? What did he breathe into her? What's Ruhana? Well, in English, Ruhina means spirit. Okay, so what did Allah breathe into Mary? Ruhina. <laughs> this girl. I am Swahili. I don't speak Arabic. Translate. What did Allah breathe into her? English. Oh, okay. If you don't speak, then I would say Allah wrote spirit. Okay, see? So easy. Everyone heard you. Spirit. Allah so blew, blew right his spirit into her, right? That's the direct translation. Yes, good. But okay. To, but can you tell me what the Arabic, Arabic right? sister, can you tell me what the Arabic Ahsanat Farjaha means? What's a Farj? Ahsanat Farj? Yes, yeah, right there. Ahsanat Farjaha. That's the Arabic. What's a farj? farj? Yeah, what's a farj? I don't know. You sure you don't know or are you just too embarrassed? Yeah. No, I don't know. It means the woman's vagina vulva, the private part. Okay, yeah, that's why I don't know. I don't know words like that. Okay, well, that's good. You're. I pray God bless you. You stay a pure virgin and meet a godly Christian man to marry you and show you the love of Jesus in Jesus' name. Beautiful. I'm glad you're not spoiled and rotten like 90% of the world population. Anyway, it says, Mary guarded her vagina vulva, and we breathe into her vagina vulva, our spirit. Now, let me ask you a question. Why did Allah breathe the spirit into her private part? To do what? To make her pregnant. Wow! Everyone heard you. Thank you. So guys, hear what she just said. God sent his spirit to get Mary pregnant. So you just admit the spirit is creator and life giver. Good job. You just admit. Yeah, by this verse, by this verse, which says specifically says Ruhana. Yeah. And so the that spirit that, that came to Mary. Means. So the spirit that came to Mary appeared as a man, spoke to her. She spoke to him and he says, I'm here to get you pregnant. And then he entered her body and get, got her pregnant. So here you just admit the Spirit of God is a person who can appear as a man who creates and gives life. Now do the math. How many is that? Allah and the Spirit. So, how many is that? Yeah. 
okay, but I said that's what the direct translation means. I didn't say that was So you want to go indirect? What okay, how do you go indirect out of around this? What's the indirect? I didn't say it was the correct translation. <laughs> Okay, let's go to indirect translation. Translate the way you want. Let's see. Okay, go ahead. Translate it. Let's see how you're going to translate it. The, the correct translation is that this is an angel. So the angel created Jesus. So you made an angel a creator and a partner with Allah. So you now are a mushrik. You just committed shirk. Good job. By the permission of God. Just like so Moses Allah said, permitted so an angel. See, you're still not listening. Allah permitted an angel to create and give life. That means Allah made the angel his partner in creating and giving life. So now you just said Allah is the one who committed shirk. Good job. So Allah is a mushrik. Good job. Yay. Keep it up. Keep bearing your God. Keep it up. I said by the permission of God. So Allah gave permission to an angel to create and give life, which means Allah permitted an angel to be his partner in creating. So Allah committed shirk. What don't you get? Not to know. He didn't give permission to create and give life. Who created Jesus in the womb? You just said the spirit who is the angel. Are you not go back backpedaling? Backpedaling? I'm not backpedaling. I'm so who created story. Jesus in the womb? The angel. Oh, so the angel him. created. The angel couldn't do it by himself. So he Allah gave him the ability God. to create? Allah gave him the ability? So Allah made an angel his partner in creating and allowed him to share in his power to create. So you end up with Allah being a mushrik. So you can't get out of this. You just condemned Allah for committing shirk and you still don't get it. No, because that was God's will. He gave him God's will to, to commit shirk. Him. Good job. God's will to commit shirk. Allahu Akbar. Thank you. So guys, you heard it. Her God will to commit shirk because he took a creature and gave the creature the ability to create committing shirk. Allahu Akbar. Thank you. You just condemned your God to hell for committing shirk. Wonderful. Keep it up, sister. Come on. Wonderful. Yeah, Keep it up. No, give Gabriel, Gabriel brought the spirit. So Nowhere does it say Gabriel. Gabriel doesn't mention Gabriel. Don't add the words. Okay, Gabriel's angel, not angel. Okay. And where does it say the angel brought the spirit? It said, no, the angel said, I will give you a faultless son. Going with your translation. I'm going to give you the son. Okay. That's why, that's why you have to read Tafsir of Quran. Oh, you, you wait, 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 wait. All this time, you didn't want to go to Hadith, but now you want to go to Tafsir. And yet the tafsir, they come centuries later and they're going to tell you what they think the Quran means. But when I wanted to go to the Hadith, don't go to Hadith, but let's go to tafsir. Woman, you are embarrassing yourself. So I don't think that it's an embarrassment because it's just honest questions being asked. What but honest like questions? I, I asked before. you questions. Can you just admit the spirit is a creator and life giver? So either Allah is two or Allah is uh, someone who commits shirk. So you're not going to get around this. You're stuck. According to in Islam, Allah is one and that's it. One what? Is he one what? One door, one vehicle, one tire, one attribute? What? One what? One what? One God. Okay, what does one God mean? That's it, one God. What does that mean? Okay, what does it mean to be one God? You didn't explain anything. One God. That's it. Quran, You're gonna repeat it. One God. One names. God. What we does that mean? Okay. Names. Okay. Well, Allah. Oh, He has how many names? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You said He's one. How can He have ninety-nine names? He's only one. You can't have more than one. Ninety-nine names, attributes. You can't. Ha no. If He's one, He can't have ninety-nine attributes. You can only have one if He's one. Sorry. Um, no, that's not true. Oh, thank it you for laughing. Convenient. Laugh with me, sister. Let's laugh together. <laughs> That's my point, and you're still not getting it. To say God is one doesn't tell me what that means because you can have God being one in one way, but being more than one in another way, and you still don't get it. And you just proved my point, and you still don't get it. Exactly. Just because God is one doesn't mean that that one God can't be a plurality. Since you believe the one God has a plurality of names and still can be one, so why can't he be a plurality of persons and still be one God? You see, you're not getting it. 
because that's a direct contradiction to where, the surah that says. Where does the Quran say Allah is only one person, therefore he can only be one person if he's one? Where? Give me the verse. The most basic Quranic verse that every Muslim knows. And it doesn't Allah say he's one person. Sorry, it doesn't work. Kulu Allahu Ahad doesn't prove your point. It says he's one. What does okay. Allahu Ahad mean? I'm asking what you Allah? what it means. What does it mean? So Allah is one, Ahad. One God. What does it mean for to him be one God? That means he only has one name. See, Ahad means Allah only has one name. Prove me wrong. And that means he has only one name. One God, one name. That's it. If he's Ahad, that means he only has one name because he's Ahad. That's it. I just destroyed your religion. Prove me wrong. doesn't say anything about name. Thank you. And it doesn't say anything about persons. It doesn't say he is Ahad, one person. Just like it doesn't say Ahad, one name. See, you're helping me refute you. Good job. Keep it up. Thank uh, you. Yeah, so then it says, <laughs> And what does Samad mean? <laughs> what does Samad does mean? Not, he does not give birth, nor does he What begat. does Samad mean? You still didn't answer my question. What does Samad mean? Exactly, because even your Muslim scholars didn't know what Samad meant. Now, when it says, Lam yalad wa lam yulad, okay. In the Quran, what does it mean, Lam yalad wa lam yulad? In the Quran, what does uh, walad mean? Lam yalad wa lam yulad means he does not give birth and nor has he been. Give birth in what way, according to the Quran? How does the Quran define walad, that word? To give birth walad? sexually, right? Correct. And so can you name one Christian who believes that God gave birth to Jesus sexually? Well, sexually? Yeah, because no, the word lam yalad, well, let, me, let me explain. Lam yalad, well, lam yulad, that word walad in the Quran, always when it's used in the Quran, always it means offspring through sexual intercourse. Always, when the word walad is used, always in the Quran. So no Christian believes that Jesus is God's walad through sex, that God had sex and he gave birth to Jesus. So that doesn't say anything about my deen, so you're misapplying it. So now I want to ask... Uh, I'll just... I don't know about that. I'll have to take your word on no, that. You, you, you better take it because I've done the research. Just means sexual... Yes. Like I said, I, that's... Yes. I even wrote articles on it. The word walad always in the Quran refers to offspring through sexual intercourse. Your parents, children. It always means children born through sexual union. Okay, now okay. I want to ask you a question and we're going to end mm -hmm. it because I got to do another live stream somewhere else. In chapter 6 of the Quran, verse 101, Chapter 6 of the Quran, verse 101. There it says, mm -hmm. wonderful, I want you to listen to this. Wonderful originator of the heavens and the earth. How can he have an offspring seeing he has no consort? In other words, he can't have a child without a consort, right? Right. Okay, you sure you agree with that logic? How could he have a son when he does not have a companion yes. and he created all things? So you agree with that logic? That he can only have a companion if he has a consort, and if he doesn't have a consort, he's not going to have a companion. You agree with that logic? You got to agree with the Quran here. You can't say you don't agree, right? Yeah, of course, because there are things that God can't do. Okay. Like God can't die. Excellent. Well, okay, we'll get to that part. We'll we'll talk about whether he can or not. You're you're assuming too much. You just proved that your God is an ignoramus. Do you know why? Can I tell you why you just proved God is an ignoramus? Enlighten me. Okay, because Mary said the same thing. To the spirit. If you go back to Surah al Maria, chapter 19, verse 20, she said the same thing. How can I have a son seeing I've known no man? And your God said, that's easy. So wait, it's easy for Mary to have a son without a consort, but your God, it's too difficult for him to have a son unless he has a consort. So Mary is bigger and better than your God. No, definitely not. So then why could Mary have a son without a consort but your God can't have a son unless he has a consort. Why? 
he can't have a son period no that's not true nowhere to say he can't have a son period because in chapter 43 of the quran verses three and four it says that this quran chapter 43 verses three and four it says this quran is in the mother of the book umul kitab that's with us can you read that for me chapter 43 verses three and four Quran 43 verses 3 and 4 okay watch here Read okay it says it says indeed we have made it in Arabic Quran that you might understand and indeed it is in the mother of the book with us exalted and full of wisdom okay pay attention to verse 4 this Quran is in the mother of the book um, um kitab that is with us so that means mm -hmm. the Quran has a mother the mother of the book that's with Allah now listen to me carefully because I want you now refute the logic the Quran you said is the word of Allah the Quran has a mother it's in the mother of the book well if the Quran has a mother and it's the word of Allah, and the mother is with Allah. That means the Quran's mother is the wife of Allah. Allah is the father of the Quran, according to Islamic logic. Not every no, because yes, it's the right there. Problem, you read no, it. The problem with what you're saying is that you're assuming that everything is just a black and white. That's not how it works. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just, just using the no, 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 no. You can't get around this. I'm using the logic of the Quran. If the Quran is in the mother of the book, Um al Kitab, mother of the book, and the mother is with Allah, that means the mother belongs to Allah. And the Quran is the word of Allah, that means the, Allah is the daddy. Allah is the daddy of the Quran, and the mommy of the Quran is his wife. That's Islamic logic. Refute me. I can refute you because it doesn't mean mother of the book, doesn't mean literally there is a mother. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to take it literally because Allah can't have a son unless he has a consort. So he can't have a son spiritually unless he has a consort. So the Quran can't have a mother unless it's literally and sexually. And Allah is the daddy because the mother is with Allah and the Quran is the word of Allah. Allah is the daddy. Mini abuch. Mini abuch. Allah. Yeah, you can't take that literally. And that's oh, you saying, can't right? take that literally. So the Quran can have a mommy. Mary can have a son without having sex and a consort. And the mommy of the Quran can have a book without having a concert, but your poor Allah can't have a son unless he has sex. So the mother of the Quran is greater than Allah and Mary's greater than Allah because they can have offspring and children without sex, but your poor God can't have a son unless he has sex. <laughs> oh, Jibreel, please help me. I am Allah, even though I can do everything, I can't have a son unless I have a consort. But Mary can have a son without a consort, and the Quran can have a mommy without having a daddy. Oh, oh, oh. Are you serious? Yeah, so there's some things that Allah can't do. For example, God can't go to hell. God can't die. Wait, wait, who's sustaining hell? Wait, no, no, let me catch you. Who's sustaining hell? Who's giving life to hell? Who's preserving hell? Yeah, God, but God. Ah, is not no, no, you caught yourself. To hell. No, no, you caught yourself. Yes, Once you admit, you're not listening. Once you admit Allah sustains hell and He's given life to hell, He has to be there because hell has to be in His control. So, no, you just refuted yourself. He's not there. He can be in His control and He's not How there. can He not be there so He can control something without being there? Explain that to me. Yeah, I can How? have a business in Dubai. Without no, but you're not God. And you have no control of your business. That's going to refute you because if you're not in your business personally, you don't know what they're doing to your business in Dubai. No, that actually refutes you. Because you're not in Dubai running the business. You're here trusting the people that are honest, but you don't know if they're stealing or destroying your business. That destroys your argument. Okay, so in Christianity, you believe that God can go to hell. He's going well, to if, himself if, to let hell. me explain in Christianity. Don't change it because you argue. In Christianity, the entire creation is before God. He oversees every part of creation. He sustains every part of creation. So he's actually present in hell, not to suffer, but to punish. Yes, Revelation 14, verses 9 to 11, and Psalm 139, 7 to 8. So don't teach me my religion. I know what I believe, and I know what okay, it means. Can then can God go to hell to suffer? Why would he go to hell to suffer when he's the one who's punishing people in hell? The suffering comes from him. Okay, so that's proof that God can't do something. No, okay, but wait, sister, hold on. You said he's not in hell. So now you believe he's in hell, but he's not there to suffer? When I said 
in hell, I said he's not going to condemn himself. I literally used the word condemn. Okay, so all right. Let's, okay, so now that's fine. Now show me that God having a son is one of the things he can't do. Show me that. Well, I said, Lam yalid wa lam yulid, but you told me that's such yeah, a... The, yeah, because walad throughout the Quran means natural parentage and offspring through sexual and sexual intercourse. Oh my goodness. Okay, God cannot die. Is that something you Okay, and what do you mean by die? Wait, wait, what do you mean by die? God can't die. die. What do you mean by die? The Explain Father, it. the Son, the Holy Ghost. The what do you mean by die? You're not answering the question. What do you mean by die? As in die. What? There is no explanation. Yeah, for there is. Die. There's Death. different explanations here. I'll give you an example because you still don't get it. In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 154, it says the martyrs, the shaheed who are killed, say not they're dead. They're not dead, but they're alive. So they didn't die? say they're not dead they're not alive. dead they are alive though you perceive not that's what surah al-baqarah chapter 2 verse 154 says mm -hmm. so are they dead or they're not dead that's what was perceived okay so they didn't die that's what was perceived but it said they're killed what are you talking about so that's what i'm saying explain death death if you mean death ceasing to exist even human beings that die don't cease to exist. If you mean death, that God can become man and have that physical body put to death and still be alive, He can do that. And He did it in Jesus Christ. So what do you mean by death? Meaning, okay, you said the son, right? The son came down, he died. What about the father? Can the father... If the father didn't become died? man. If the father became man and chose to die human death, yes. If the spirit became man and chose to experience human death, yes. But the father's spirit did not become man. Jesus did. And as a man, he experienced human death, but he was still alive and didn't cease to exist. So according to you, the father the son and the holy ghost can all die according to if the let me repeat it again if the father wanted to become man and experience a human death he could do that if the spirit wanted to become man and experience human death he could do that the son chose to become man he experienced human death but he was still ever living and never ceased to exist i just answered the question yes you said the son chose to become man. Yes, but I John 10, 17, 18. I thought it was the what? father sent to the son. Are you like mentally challenged? You're thinking that because the father sent him, that he was forced against his will? The father sent the son and the son perfectly... I didn't perfectly... say forced against his will. What? I didn't say forced okay, against so his yeah, will. Okay, so yeah, the son chose to die. John 10, 17, 18. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay my life down of my own accord no one can take it away from me mm -hmm. yes he chose john 10 and that's 17. why he said god why have you forsaken are you me? you want to go back to that you want me to embarrass you with that again do you know the well, context of that you, do you know the context that, of mark 15 34 what is going no 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 let me tell you why there's no contradiction because being an ignoramus you don't know where he's quoting from mark 15 34 my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's quoting Psalm 22, verse 1. Can I now explain to you what he means so you don't make that stupid argument again? Sure. Okay, let's go to Psalm 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. That's what he's quoting. Okay, let's go there. So he, so he's just quoting another No, if you let me finish the point, words. you're going to get school. If you let me finish the point, you're going to get school. Here's what he's quoting, Psalm 22, verse 1. Psalm 22, verse 1, to the chief musician said to the deer of the dawn, a psalm of David, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now let's finish it. Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Jesus' words isn't why you've abandoned me. His words are, how much longer will I remain in this condition where I'm under the judgment for sin when it's now finished, done with, over with? It's not, oh, why are you forsaken? It's how much longer will I remain in this predicament? It's all finished. The sin, the sin debt has been paid. It's over. And then guess what happens when Jesus said that? The darkness was removed because God answered him. Son, it is over. Time to come home. 
that's when he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So it's not, oh my God, why did you forsake me, Father? <laughs> no, no. It's, Father, all things are finished. I have fulfilled your will. I have drunk the cup. The debt of sin is paid. How much more longer will the judgment last now that all things are finished? And the answer is, it's over, son. That's why the darkness vanished. And then he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So don't quote passages out of context when you need to read passages in context because you're going to keep embarrassing yourself. That's fine. I won't quote passages out of context, but even the way that you just explained it right now, it sounds like a father or a God talking to a human. It doesn't sound like two gods Why? that are all knowing. And I don't believe they're two gods. Number one, I don't believe they're two gods, two persons. And why can't one speak to the other, especially Jesus trying to signify to people in front of him, I am fulfilling the prophecy and now see that the father hears and does everything I ask. That's actually a sign from Jesus to show he's the almighty son who gets whatever he wants because the father does everything that the son asks. What are you talking about? But now it's, it's going to be a sign that he says, why have what? You yes, because did God answer him right away and remove the darkness? Yes or no? Yes. That's a sign that I am the almighty son of God who gets whatever I want from the father because the father always does what I ask. And that's in John 11, 41, 44. But before I go there, you sure you want to use this argument? Because now you're going to prove that Allah is a false God. You sure you want to use this argument? Yeah, I want to use the Arabic. You sure? Because you know Arabic, right? Yeah, I guess. You know Arabic, right? My Arabic. I know Arabic. Go to Surat Al-Baqarah. You just destroyed Allah. You just destroyed Allah I and did. buried Allah. Yes, you did. did. Go to Surat Al-Baqarah. Al Go to Surat Al-Baqarah. Allahu Akbar. Go to Surat Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse Which 157. Verse? 157. 157? Yes, okay. because you just destroyed Allah because your God prays. Who does he pray to? Read for me the Arabic, slowly. Surat, chapter 2, verse 157. Salawatun Repeat that word again. Salawatun. Salawatun. Salawat, right? Mm -hmm. And then finish it. Min Rabbihim. Okay. Wa rahmatun wa ulaika hum al muhtadun. What does the word salawat mean? Blessings. You wicked liar. The word blessing is baraka. Audhu billah. Oh, the Billah, you think you're going to lie to me and get away with it. The word salawat is plural for salah. The word for blessing is baraka. Baraka is blessing. Barakat would be blessings. The word salawat means prayers. Why would you lie to me? Yeah, I'm not lying. I'm reading Sahih International. Forget Sahih oh, yeah, International for the love of your God. What is the word prayers in Arabic? Say the word salat. prayers in Arabic. Salat. Say it again. Salah. And then what's salawat? Prayers, plural. Oh, so you just admit it. It says, the prayers of your Lord is upon them. What prayers of your Lord? Your Lord has prayers? Yeah, he can. He can oh, pray. so your God can pray, but Jesus can't pray sure. to the Father. Wow, you inconsistent hypocrite. How is that inconsistent? God can Why can't God Jesus can pray prayers. to the Father and still be God if your God Allah can pray and still be God? Did I say Jesus can't pray to yeah, the Yeah, you just said that earlier. It sounds like a human being speaking to God, not two gods speaking to each other. Yeah, you just said that. What are you talking about? That was your argument. I didn't say I didn't say anything about prayer. I just said it sounds like somebody is uncertain. No, it should be certain. How can it be uncertain when he's saying it's time to be reconciled. It is now over because I have drunk the cup fully. It is finished because the psalmist is telling you it's not, oh God, how? okay, it's done with, time to come home. You know you can ask a question, not because you're looking for an answer, but ask a question in order to put someone on the spot or to get your request. In other words, here, I'll give you an example. How, long, how much longer are you gonna be stupid? Am I asking or am I actually belittling you and saying, stop being stupid? Okay, is there another verse in the Bible that is like what you said? Yes, all over the Bible and the Quran. In the Quran, 
When Abraham asked Allah to show him how he gives life to the dead, didn't Allah ask him a question? Why? Do you doubt? Why was he asking a question? Why do you doubt? Because he's testing his faith. Oh, but why does he ask? Sure sounds like Allah's a human being who's asking a human being to help him understand the question. No, he knows, but he's helping him understand. Oh, but when Jesus asks questions, it immediately assumes he's ignorant. You see your inconsistency again? Uh, the difference is that you're saying Jesus is God. So. But Allah's God. Allah's the one who's telling Muhammad, uh, Abraham, why are you doubting me? Correct. So uh, how can Allah ask? I thought he's God. He knows everything. He does know everything. Why is he asking? He's not asking out of ignorance. Oh, but Jesus must be asking out of ignorance. You see why you're inconsistent? But what you're saying though is that Jesus already knew. That's different. Just it's like different. Allah That's already knew. No, no. Just that. like Allah already knew. Allah already knew what Abraham was going to say, but he asked anyway. Or in Surah Al Maidah, chapter. Let me finish the point. Abraham. Listen okay, to the point. Finish. Surah Al Maidah, chapter 5, verse 116. Allah will ask Jesus, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you tell the people to take you and your mother as two gods? You ignorant Allah, don't you know the answer? Why are you asking, stupid? You see your logic, what you just did? No, because exactly what you said, that you just answered the own question. That's so the, Allah. Thank you. Human. So then, then that, oh that's my Allah goodness, I'm going to hit my head against the wall. Hold Allah on. Okay, let me I hit but my head against the wall. Why is Allah asking Jesus? Does, why is Allah asking Jesus if Jesus told people, did you, you know, worship me and my mother as two gods when Allah knows Jesus didn't ask that. So why is he asking? Why is Allah, who's not a man, asking? Why is he asking what? Why is he asking Jesus, did you tell mankind to take you and your mother as two gods when he supposedly knows Jesus never asked or told people that and he's no only. So why is he asking again? This is in the Quran? Yeah, chapter 5, verse 116. Okay, chapter 5, verse 116. Hmm. We got to finish up because I got to go do another live stream. Okay. But sure. why? Uh, why is he asking? Whatever answer you give, pay attention. That's the same thing with Jesus. Jesus can ask questions not because he's ignorant. Just like if Allah can ask questions not because he's ignorant. He has a reason to ask. But automatically in your mind, oh, see, Jesus is a man. He doesn't know everything. That's why... Stop being inconsistent. That's all I'm telling you. Stop. It's not, it's not inconsistent, but, but because uh, according to Islam, Jesus was a man, so it makes sense. But it's he, not Jesus asking, man. it's Allah oh, asking. Hello? It's God. Allah asking a man. Okay, I'm going to hang up on you if you talk over me. It's Allah asking a man. Stop ignoring the context. It's not Jesus the man asking. It's Allah, the all-knowing God, asking Jesus, Why, Allah, are you stupid? Don't you already know the answer? Stuck for Allah. Exactly. Get stuck for Allah. Allah will be stuck by Jesus when Jesus damns your Allah to hell because Allah is Satan, not the true God. Exactly. Get stuck for Allah. So why is Allah, whom you think is all-knowing, asking Jesus, the man, if he went around telling people, did you tell people take you and your mother as gods? Doesn't Allah already know? Why is he asking? Of course he already knows. Why is he asking? I can't answer that question. I'm not God. Okay, so then don't ever, here's the point, don't ever question Jesus' deity because he asks. Because if you're going to do that, bury Allah and the Quran because Allah prays and asks. So according to you, Allah is less than human. Is Jesus God? And is Jesus the God man? Is Jesus God? Is he the God man? Yes or no, according to my belief? Yeah, I'm asking. Okay, you now is Allah God? God? Answer is Allah God? Yes. And he prays? He doesn't pray. Yes, you he, just read the verse. Yes, yeah. huge. Okay, go to chapter 33, verse 43. Let me end it with you. Go to chapter 33, oh, verse 43. Pray. Okay. Go to 33, 43. It's not like God gives Salah every day. Yes, he does. Chapter 33, verse 43. Chapter 33, verse 43. This is now 10 times I just said it. Chapter 33, verse 43. 
Yeah, read it for me. Okay. Quran 33. 43. Two more verses and I got to go because it's almost time for me to go to. Oh, man, I'm late as it is. Okay. 33, okay. 43. Read it for me. 33. It is he who confers blessing upon you. Okay, what's the Arabic word? Don't give me the English butchering. What's the Arabic word? Okay. What does yusalli, yusalli mean? Yusalli means pray. So it is he who prays for you and the angels? Yeah. So Allah is praying with the angels to guide believers out of darkness into light? No, in that context, it just Read it. a blessing. No, it's not blessing because the angels also do salah. And angels, the only way they bless That's is by correct. asking Allah to bless. Don't play games with me. Allah yeah, and I the angels pray. That. Allah and the angels pray. So when angels pray, they pray to Allah. When Allah prays, is he praying to himself? Now go to 33 verse 56. 33 verse 56. Okay. Yeah. Go learn my Bible and then learn your religion because you don't know either and stop attacking my Bible. 33 verse That's 56. That's rude. Well, it's true. Oh, you talk about rude. You want me to start on Muhammad again? Allah. But 33 56. So we can end it. Indeed, Allah confers blessing upon No, the that's not what the Arabic nation. says. Oh my goodness. Man, dude, aren't you ashamed okay. of yourself? Read 3356 in I, the Arabic, please, slowly. Okay. You just said do it in English because... But your English translation is butchering the Arabic. Read the Arabic. That's why for everybody watching, just learn Arabic. If yeah, you yeah. Because Allah, Allah's handicap. Yeah, guys. Allah's handicap. He no, can only understand you in Arabic. So learn Arabic because so Allah's handicap. Can, so Can you read 3356? Can you read 3356? So that you don't have these mistakes. 3356. 3356. Sure. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, read it slowly. Inna Allaha wa malaikatahu. Yusalluna. Okay, wait. Allah and who? Angels. Do what? Blessing. Oh my goodness, you're such a shameful liar. Pray. Fine, prayer. Okay. Allah and the angels do what? Pray. Pray for who? Al-Nabi. Pray for who? The prophet. So we know when angels pray for your prophet, they pray to Allah. Who does Allah pray to when he prays for your prophet? He's praying for the prophet. He's not praying for Yeah, him. but I pray for you. See, you didn't hear me. I pray for you. Yeah. When I pray for you, I got to pray to someone when I pray for you. So when the angels pray for Muhammad, who do they pray to? God. So when Allah prays for your prophet, who does he pray to? Nobody, because he is God. So then who is he praying to when he prays for Muhammad? Because it says he it's and the angels pray. For. It's not a prayer to. What? Prayer I'm going to repeat it again. Angels are praying for Muhammad also. Allah and the angels pray for Muhammad. But when the angels pray for Muhammad, they're praying to someone. Who does your God Allah pray to when he prays for Muhammad? He's not praying to anybody because he's God. So then when he prays for Muhammad, he's got to be praying to somebody. Who? Why? That's Because it says God. Allah and the angels pray. Both of them, Allah and the angels are praying. They're doing the same action. It's right there in front of your eyes. Allah and the angels pray al nabi That's correct, but that's your logic is that Thank God you. Has to so now look, here's what you learned, sister. We're going to end it here. We got in it. Yeah, Never ever sure. dare attack Jesus because every argument you use, I just no, use to I bury Allah. Jesus. No, you don't. Okay, okay, sister. I Call me you. tomorrow. We got to go. Take care. Every argument you use buried Allah and his messenger. Jesus is Lord. He's God of Allah and God of Muhammad. And he's going to destroy both in hell. Call me tomorrow. We'll talk more. I got to go. Take care. All right. Welcome back, guys. I believe you are able to learn something from this amazing video. Let's know what you've learned. I believe Sam was able to educate us and to enlighten us more about our faith and the contradiction and the lies from the Quran. And one of it was she brought the argument that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he changes his mind. So she believed that 
God cannot become a man and that was the basic of her debate and if God decides to be a man then he is perfectly God and perfectly man he doesn't have the ability to lie and that was Sam's argument if you believe that God is all-powerful and that his power is on the meeting that he can do everything that he wants to do so what stopped this God from from becoming any of his creation from becoming a man and all that this thing so you see that most time this argument does not hold water it's just that it's a sheer limitations of human mind that is causing all of this because if you believe that God is all powerful then he should be able to do all things you see that there are so many incoherency of the Quran the verse where Sam read from that says that blessed is he who took his servant by night Sam asks her this very important question that who is the servant and another question who is the one that took the servant by night you see that there are so many coherency and on incomplete stories from that Quran perspective and she tried to hide behind the veil that the hadith is fake that her hadith is fake bearing her argument why can you why will you even say that your quran is fake because you fail to back up your claim or your your quran has been exposed this has been their games each time they come out to debate if you expose one part of the quran the next thing they will tell you that 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 side is from the case from the hadith and that the hadith is weak and all the hadith is fake this has been their issue for a very very long time why must you always do that to your hadith the issue of the trinity if you read matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 where jesus told them to go into all the world to make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit this alone proves that jesus was talking about the trinity for those that are still doubting that where did jesus talk about the trinity i believe you can see from this passage you can see that jesus was talking about the trinity the father the son and the holy spirit and this argument should be a dead end by now because it has been proven over and over again and you can see that without any doubt sam was able to prove the deity of Christ by saying that he will be the judge on the judgment day. This is the title only Allah has. Only Allah in from the Quran says that he will be the judge. And you can see from the Bible perspective that Jesus also said that he will be the judge, which means that God, Jesus is the God of all Muslims and all of you must change to become Christian. This is the only way the truth and the life jesus is the only savior of the world guys let us know what you think about this debate in the comment section and also don't forget to share our videos with your friends and your family and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos like this thank you for watching see you in our next video